What's going on ladies and gentlemen, I'm Alex, AKA Alex the Vagabond, and in this video, I'm gonna show you all of the steps that I do to transition my backyard garden from summer vegetables to fall and winter crops, so stay tuned. Well, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, bienvenidos. It's with a heavy heart that I come to the realization that summer is now gone. It's been a strange year, it's flown by, but the reality is, is that it's fall. And we are coming into the period of time here in Southern California where we need to swap over our crops. So if you follow me on Instagram or you follow my fiance, Carrie Rad, you've probably seen this summer our vegetable garden has provided us with so much joy and so much sustenance, but unfortunately, those vegetables have come to an end. And like many things in life, it's time to pull out the old, put in the new, and start afresh. So in this video, I'm gonna show you everything that we do, all of the steps to transition this backyard vegetable garden from summer to fall, so that we have a whole new batch of fresh vegetables in the middle of the winter. So stay tuned. We need this space in the back of the car for the soil. So you are gonna be not coming today, not coming. little one. You're gonna be watching the house. Right, and we should go because it's local and they've got good stuff. Sounds good. Last time I went to this nursery, they had better options for organic and it was just a local spot, which we like because support your local farmer, you know what I mean? You're in public, so it's time to mask up. All right. Here we go. This is great. They have all of the right vegetables for this season. We're getting some eggplant. We're gonna get some okra, which we've never grown before. And uh, asparagus, Swiss chard, all the good winter and fall veggies. We should try a different type of kale. Yeah, when you're selecting these, you really wanna make sure that the plants are healthy. And these ones are all looking good. Everywhere. Okay, well we've got everything that we need for planting the next season of crops. So we're gonna head home and get started getting rid of uh, all the dead stuff from this season. We've got a lot of work in front of us, so stay tuned. The other added benefit is that it's essentially a CrossFit workout. We picked out a bunch of these colorful flowers too because we want to bring in bees to the vegetable garden to help pollinate the flowers that will soon be veggies. So bees also help with vegetable gardens. They're really important for the whole entire process. So the more beautiful flowers you can bring in for the bees, the more veggies you'll have. This is our little powwow, the calm before the storm. Just getting ourselves mentally prepared for all of the work that we're about to do. <laughs> Are you ready, Lux? I think it's called like procrastinating. <laughs> first things first, our garden has been a little bit neglected. Over the last few weeks, it's been allowed to go a bit wild. And it's that means- it's been over 100. <laughs> it's been very hot here the last month. And that has translated to us being a little bit less enthused to get out into the garden and to do the necessary you know weeding the good thing is there's going to be a lot of additions to the compost heap from this so once we finish preparing mentally we will begin <laughs> this is me preparing mentally <laughs> yeah it's, it looks like you're very prepared what about you huh? 
I think he feels the same. I mean, he's always prepared for a nap. Everybody always asks, where's Lanka? How's Lanka doing? Lanka? How are you doing? He's doing really good after that block of Gouda he ate for dinner last yeah, night. Yeah, last night he was a bad boy. We uh, left some cheese unattended on the counter in the kitchen. And for the first time ever, first time in the history of having this dog, almost two years now, he helped himself to an entire block of cheese, didn't you? The Gouda was good, wasn't it? Bad boy. <laughs> This is not what you want to put into your compost. If you add these type of diseased plants into your compost, it's just gonna allow that fungus to continue to grow and it's gonna infect the soil. So make sure that you do not add these to your compost. All right, so this plot was very productive. We had a couple of big heirloom tomatoes. We had lettuce, we had strawberries, basil. But now most of that, as you can see, has gone to seed, like this lettuce. So we're gonna be pulling that. We already did kind of harvest some seeds off of this earlier in the season. That's the end of the road for this. Once your lettuce starts growing up, 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 it's because we had a very hot summer. So this is all gotta go. See this squash plant still has some life left in it. So we're gonna leave that. We're just gonna trim off all of this excess. Just be careful though, squash is spiky and it can irritate your skin. So it's best to use a glove. I haven't really been doing it today because I'm a bit of a rebel and I'm gonna pay for it tomorrow. I'm already kind of paying for it. So there Why was a spider that? in my shirt that I'm a little nervous about, but Live amongst me, living things. So this tomato still has quite a bit of life left, so we're gonna leave that, but these two, these two have run their course. Big plant, and uh, towards the end of its life there, it got a bit infected with some fungus on the leaves, so we're not going to be composting any of this. Another good tip, you can reuse all of your ties and uh, the stakes, so don't throw those away. I just like to take these and put them in my pocket and then I go and hang them back up. Must be nice. Thank you, tomatoes. Gracias, tomate mío. Gracias, mille tomate. Well, this plot behind me is ready after much trimming, much weeding. Essentially, we're gonna clear off the mulch from the top. I'm gonna to take a rake and rake it to one side. And then after that, I am going to add some compost to the soil. And then we are going to put some of the new plants into the ground. Well, it's been a eventful day, but there's no way we're gonna be able to finish this whole project in just one afternoon. So we're gonna have to come back and get into it tomorrow, but we have managed to clear two plots and plant a couple new crops. In this one, we have a, an artichoke. We have a black bell pepper, purple bell pepper, which I've actually never even heard of. So that'll be cool. We're growing some new plants. And we have collard greens, which are really, really yummy. Very prevalent in Southern food. We're also gonna be growing okra, another plant from the South, but it's cool. You know, part of this whole thing is just experimenting with trying new plants and seeing what works and what doesn't work. And as we're going into a new season, which we've only ever really done one winter grow before, we're gonna be trying a lot of new crops but um, things are looking good. The soil looks good. The compost that we have made looks really, really healthy. And uh, you can't ask for much more than that. So we're gonna put these plants in the ground and then we'll come back 
and take another stab at it tomorrow. All right, ladies and gents, today I'm going to spend the whole day out here just getting everything sorted. Essentially, you know, the plan is the same. I'm going to have to uh, take a rake and clear off the mulch. Then I'm going to add compost and a little bit of extra soil. Then I'll plant the new crop of vegetables along with some seeds that I have and cover it back up, put the mulch back on top and water it in. So. It sounds straightforward, but it is a bit time consuming. So we'll get back to work today and hopefully have this all wrapped up, cleaned up and ready for the next season in no time at all. So let's get to work. So what are your thoughts on the corn? I think it was really cool to grow the corn. I think we learned a lot from the process. I think it's nice to see how specific crops grow and how to harvest them and how much space you need for them. And I think it was a really a learning experience for us because if we do corn again in the future, we know we need more space. It's not necessarily a crop for like a garden bed unless it's a very big garden bed. It's more of like if you've got like a little plot of land. It was very cool to watch grow. It was very cool to harvest. You know, it's education in terms of, of the food that we eat. That's why growing food is just so much fun because it's just a learning process. The takeaway is, you know, zucchini is a rock star. Tomatoes. Tomatoes are great if you plant tomatoes correctly and if you plant a lot of tomatoes because we personally consume a lot of tomatoes in pretty much everything we eat and so having a lot of different varieties of tomatoes was really useful to and, us. And like staggering them when you plant, mm -hmm. like planting some and then waiting a couple of weeks and planting a couple more. That way you're harvesting throughout the season. So as you can see there's a couple of tomatoes left on this plant even though it's the end of the season. And here's a little trick you can do. We want these tomatoes to, to ripen. And so, as you can see, there's quite a lot of excess branches and leaves on this plant. But if you just get rid of them, then um, it's gonna force this tomato plant to put all of its energy into the fruit, which will help this turn over quickly. And then once we've harvested these last tomatoes off of the plant, we can pull it out and reuse this space with uh, some seeds for the next oop, for the next season. Also a really great way to continue to feed your compost is if uh, you mow your lawn or if you have gardeners who come and mow your lawn, take all of the grass clippings and put them into the compost bin. This is a really good way to continually add organic matter that easily breaks down and turns back into soil. So this is a good method to keep adding to your compost on top of your vegetable trimmings and all of the other little bits and bobs that go into the compost on the daily.
Well, it's been kind of a drawn out process, but we have come to the end. We have uh, successfully weeded and cleared out all of the old vegetables from the summer crops that were dead. And uh, we've cleared out, added compost, added fresh soil, planted a whole bunch of different vegetables for this next season. Most of which are uh, you know, optimized for that cooler climate that we're gonna get here. We planted some okra, some spinach, eggplant, fava beans, Swiss chard, leeks, chives, artichoke, collard greens, the list goes on and on. And it requires a good bit of effort in the setup, but you'd be surprised. A couple of days working in the garden, in a few months, it's gonna provide us with quite a lot of food. And I love that about gardening. It's kind of like putting some pennies into a piggy bank. After a while, you know, there's there's quite a lot of little pennies in there. So hopefully you found this video informational, practical, fun, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications enabled so you don't miss out on any future videos. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.